My name is Marlon Schmidt, M-A-R-L-I-N-S-C-H-M-I-D-T. I'm the MLA for Edmonton Gold Bar and the Environment Critic for the Official Opposition. Thank you so much for joining us today, Parks Day in Alberta, where we take the time to acknowledge, commemorate, and celebrate the natural beauty and wonder that we have access to right here in our own home province. We're gathered on the traditional territory of the signatories of Treaty 7, and I also want to recognize the Métis people who share a deep connection with this land. In my former work as a geologist, protecting and enjoying nature and the beauty of our province has always been important to me, and Alberta parks are near and dear to my heart. When we announced our promise to remove the fees for using Kananaskis country, I received countless emails of support but a number of them also came alongside some ideas for how we could use the love that Albertans have for their parks in different ways. After many conversations with different Albertans, it's become clear that they want an option to support our parks without a mandatory fee and with certainty that their support is actually helping to enhance our parks. One fellow I talked to said, I'm glad you scrapped the K-Pass, but as someone who can afford it and who does regularly use the park system, I would love a way to give back and contribute. So today, I'm proposing that Alberta's NDP would set up a program where people could voluntarily contribute a donation to support our provincial parks. This could range from one-time donations to monthly donor subscriptions or even specific legacy donations and sponsorships. A program where the donations would go directly into our park system rather than general revenue. So unlike the K-Pass, Albertans would be reassured that their generosity is directly benefiting Alberta's parks. This isn't a unique idea. It's also done in British Columbia and Ontario with revenues upwards of $10 million annually. As, supplement, as supplementary revenue, this would be on top of the Alberta Parks budget. We would not penalize departmental funding due to the success of this program. The mandate of Alberta Parks is in protecting conservation, in Indigenous cultural enrichment alongside traditional and current practice, and providing wonderful visitor experiences that allow Albertans to access nature. These would remain our priorities in addition to commemorative and legacy donations. Additionally, we would introduce an Alberta Parks license plate option, much like those already existing for veterans or Calgary and Edmonton sports charities. Simplifying your ability to support Alberta Parks when you register your vehicle or request a plate, you would receive a beautifully designed plate showcasing your support for the amazing land we are all so fortunate to have access to. Our parks shouldn't only be available to those who can afford a fee. They belong to each and every Albertan. And as such, Albertans should have the ability to contribute and give back to the land that brings so much joy, recreation and beautiful memories to individuals and families across our province. I'd now like to invite Jamie Reese, who has a deeply rooted connection to Alberta parks through her family and their shared love of natural landscapes. Jamie. Hi there, I'm Jamie Reese. That's J A I M I R E E S E, like the chocolate bar. Hi, I'm Jamie, and I've been spending time in Alberta parks since well before I could walk. Honestly, before I was born, my folks and older siblings were the ones who taught me my love of the outdoors. My parents now live in Canmore, and I love to spend time there, especially with my nieces and nephew. We are so fortunate to be able to spend time and live in an area so close to parks. We use them constantly, hiking, camping, canoeing, long-term treks, and for teaching the next generations of our family about our love of nature, our love of nature. Using specialty license plate fees to protect and support provincial parks and protected areas in Alberta provides an excellent opportunity to ensure conservation of important landscapes, habitats and species, as well as access to nature for a broad range of park users. Considering the success of the BC Parks license plate program, implementing a similar parks enhancement fund in Alberta will enable revenues to enhance programs, services and projects in provincial parks beyond the core services provided by government. With more people visiting provincial parks than ever before, establishing an Alberta Parks license plate program to provide additional funds for parks protection and enhancement would be a superb way to celebrate Parks Day in Alberta. Additionally, we received a message of support from Sean Peters with the Bragg Creek and Kananaskis Outdoor Recreation. 
Bragg Creek and Kananaskis Outdoor Recreation welcomes this wonderful news. There are many people who want to provide financial support to help keep Alberta Parks a pristine, beautiful place for all Albertans to enjoy. This innovative idea will not only allow everyone to enjoy Kananaskis, but also allow those who cannot afford to contribute more a way to donate through an open and accountable process. A process that actually leads to conservation. We will buy a plate and hope to see parking lots filled with vehicles displaying their support for the jewel of Alberta. You have my guarantee. Alberta's NDP are committed to supporting the abundance of beautiful land we have in this pr province and making our parks accessible to all, while allowing Albertans to make a choice to support these important spaces that enrich all of our lives. This approach strikes a balance of keeping our outdoor spaces accessible to all and providing a way for those who want to contribute to do so with confidence. So thank you very much and I will happy, I'm happy to take any questions you might have. We'll now open the floor for questions. Do we have any in person? Yeah. Sir, uh, Keith with CTV News, uh, how much uh, money do you think this program will raise and where will all that money go? Yeah, so what we're proposing is uh, creating a, a dedicated revenue fund that can only be spent on uh, programs and enhancements to parks. So things like uh, trail maintenance, uh, garbage removal, uh, uh, upgrading outhouses, those kinds of things. Um, we are, uh, so it's a dedicated revenue fund. Uh, we're looking at the BC Plates program, they raised uh, uh, almost $10 million last year from their program. Uh, and it, it generates more money every year as people buy, continue to purchase plates. Uh, the Ontario program is also really successful, ge generating in the millions of dollars a year for, of donations from Ontarians. We don't think that there's any reason that Albertans would be any less generous than the people of British Columbia or Ontario uh, in supporting our parks. So this is such a progressive idea. Why do you think the UC hasn't thought of it because it benefits everybody, does it not? Well, we like this idea because it doesn't prevent anybody from going out to parks if they don't have the ability to pay. If they do have the ability to pay, we, we will be creating an option for them to support their parks voluntarily. Uh, I, I, I can't speak to why the UCP uh, introduced this parks pass. I've questioned the minister or the former minister on this. He's never really provided a, a coherent answer. Um, We've heard loudly and clearly from Albertans that they don't like the K-Country Pass, and we think that this is an idea that Albertans will be more willing to get behind. Uh, last question, how much would the plates cost, and when would they be available in a perfect world? We, we haven't set a price yet. Uh, we don't know what the, the cost would be in Alberta. Uh, I do know that the cost in BC is $50 for the initial plate and then $40 for the renewal. Uh, I, I mean, we'd have to look and make sure that it's in line with uh, what uh, a, a new plate costs in Alberta and, and go from there. Uh, you talk about protection. One of the big things I noticed during the pandemic is a lot of people were sadly abusing the parks in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. How would you plan on like, limiting that? Because like, that was one of the big issues for implementing the pass in the first place, trying to basically, or I don't know if it's even permission or not, but basically enforcing basically people to actually take care of our beautiful parks, which they weren't doing sadly during the pandemic. Yeah, so that's that's been one of the drivers of people's uh, discontent with the K-Country Pass in the first place. The UCP told them that there would be more conservation officers on the ground, uh, better enforcing the, the laws that protect our natural spaces, but people haven't seen that enforcement take place. Uh, and there have been a whole lot of questions around how many additional enforcement officers have been hired, where are they working, how much has the K-Country Pass uh, go, uh, gone to training and, and putting those people out, out, out uh, on the landscape. Uh, I think that this, this is a, a unique and innovative solution to that problem. We would provide accountability and transparency in an annual report every year showing how much money is being spent from this dedicated fund to parks protection. But moreover, I think um, what we would do is, is, is it would free up money from the existing parks budget to enhance the number of conservation officers on the landscape uh, uh, so that they are doing that actual enforcement, all while taking people off of the, uh, the, 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 the license plate checking. So one of the worries that people have had is that, are we hiring conservation officers to just give pe people tickets for not paying the K-Country fee? We can put, actually put those people to work uh, protecting the park. We'll now go to the phones. So use the raise hand function or star nine on the phone. And please state your name and outlet for us. 
Call hey, this is Dylan line. Short. With, sorry. Hi, this is Dylan Short with uh, Post Media Calgary. I apologize if I ask a question that's already been asked. It was a little, just a little difficult to hear the questions. Anyways, um, for Mr. Schmidt, I was I just want to make sure that this would be an initiative that you would take on top of removing the K-Pass. So you would also remove the K-Conservation K Pass and then implement this additional optional fee for, for users. Yep, that's, ex that's exactly what we're proposing, Dylan. We believe that uh, people shouldn't be prevented from going to the parks because they don't have the ability to pay the K-Country fee, uh, but also provide the option of people who are happy to pay to support our parks, an, an option knowing full well that the money that they're giving to the government will be spent on parks. And then just in terms of transparency and accountability, how would this fee or the money that's collected through this fee be presented? Would this be a line item in the budget? Like, Because we're seeing now with the conservation pass, a lot of user groups are saying that we're not really sure where all this money is going. How would you make sure that that's not still an issue with this new option? So this would be a dedicated revenue fund. It would not go into general revenue. Uh, it would be... Uh, sent to a dedicated revenue fund where uh, the money can only be spent on initiatives to enhance parks. There would be an annual report published every year detailing exactly how much money is being spent where. Uh, very much modeled on the BC Parks Plate program. Uh, in BC they uh, put the Parks Plate money into a dedicated revenue fund and produce an annual report uh, detailing the expenses from that fund. Sorry, sorry, just one more question, and it's just for, I know the license plate is obviously one way to show this, but say someone doesn't have a vehicle, but they still want to support the parks and show that they support the parks. I know it's probably still early plannings, but it, would there be other ways to, for people to show that they've yes, provided the, for this? There, there would be. So we would give people an option to make a, a, a one-time donation, maybe become a monthly subscriber to parks, or... or uh, perhaps leave an inheritance, uh, a, 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 a gift in their will to support parks. And that's adopted from a program that they have in Ontario that allows people to make these voluntary contributions to support the parks in that province. So if you have a, if you have a vehicle, you can buy the plate. If you don't want to buy the plate or you don't have a vehicle, you can still make a voluntary donation to support the parks. And any further questions on the line? Seeing none, thank you all for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching. And to learn more, check out albertasfuture.ca.